Hey guys, Rick from Over the Fender Garage. We are going to get into making a rear balance and bumper for my truck. I've kind of got the layout going on here for what was in my head. And now I need to take this off and transfer it on to media so I can make a mold out of it. That's my general idea where I'm going with it. So I got the exhaust system all done. It's got a center exhaust. Four pipes sticking out of it. Got the license plate in the center. So I'm going to take the license plate and I'm going to have it on a hinge so I can put a reese hitch behind the hit behind the license plate so I can tow with the truck if I have to. But there's my basic idea and basic shape. And now start transferring it over and start making a bumper out of this stuff. This is really going to turn up the attitude on this truck. So we'll get this off here and we'll start making a bumper. Okay, here is the piece I just took off the truck. Because it's just a piece of cardboard mocked up. I got this like 12 inches, which I'm gonna shrink it down. It'll be more like 10 and a half, 10 somewhere in there. I'm gonna transfer this from right here. This is the mark inside the tailgate hole. It's the same thing on this side, inside the tailgate hole. That's where I'm gonna go. I just ran the cardboard all the way across to make it easier while I was thinking about it. But I want this one to go inside because this is where we're making up the real thing instead of just getting an idea going. So I'm going to make it to the right inside the tailgate so it slides in that hole. So that's the piece I'm going to make right now. It'll be this lower piece. And then I'll get the cut out for the exhaust right here. And I'll cut out for the license plate because I want the license plate to be flat where this has got a curve in it. So that's the piece I'm going to cut up right now. Okay, there's the first cut. I did this one at 30 degrees. I think it's too much. It's gonna to have to go 40, 45. But for right now, because it lays back like this, it's better to start out shallow and work towards it. And there's where the license plate goes, my center line. So we go stick this thing up. Okay, there is the piece I just cut on the bench, which sticks up in here, both sides here, just like that. Looks pretty good. Now, I want it also get right there. But I want to mount it up there, and how I'm going to do it, very important process, hot glue gun. You really got to have one of these to do this. If you're going to make up your own sort of idea into a bumper. But I just got wood blocks here, 
and they're just about the depth I need. So I'm going to glue them on this back end here. And that's what's going to hold my wood. So I got a whole bunch of them cut here. Should go along. My license plate is all marked out right here. This is the angle I want because I want the license plate flat. But I want the valance to be, you know, with the curve of the truck. So I put this block right there so I'm not into that curve because I'm going to have to cut that out next. Keep these down low enough that the tailgate, I'm going to have to try to see the tailgate a little bit with those. But on top of this, I'll put a stiff piece of cardboard or something, something that's not as thick as the wood I'm using. The wood is only eighth inch, but it could hit because I want to have the top of this go flat underneath the tailgate. And then probably come down a little bit. That's where it'll bolt onto the body of the truck. And then behind the license plate, I'll have two here. So that'll hold there. And then these ones will all be hidden back so there's no, no exposed fasteners. At least that's the plan. See if this tailgate opens. <laughs> oh. Perfect. Gets close, but it doesn't hit him. So, that's a good spot. Okay, so now, take this thing here, get it up here, like that. And then we'll stick it up real quick. So, I can mark this. Cooperate, go to tape. where I want it. It's right in that spot. So I want to transfer these marks down onto my piece here. Hold it to the jaw system.
tape there. Piece there. Just my guy go a little further. Like that. Like that. All right. Now, take these marks here. Makes it easier so you don't have to do all kinds of remeasuring because everything's already written down, marked out. It's nice when it's uh, not in painted people yet. Damn, I got something wrong here. something off a little bit my license plate's over that way a little bit so most likely it's that line since I was using the cardboard and it's not perfect on there so you go through here again check if I go off this side of the muffler exhaust system one right here that one all right who's not playing right here None of this is fully bolted or welded yet, so I can slide it all around a little bit and adjust it. <clears throat> so exhaust has got to go quarter inch that way. Close though. <laughs> Be in there, that'll be in there. All right, so this line here is gonna have to meet over probably. That one there, that's at six and a quarter. See this one here, this is at five and three quarters, five and seven eighths. Move it to six and a quarter. All right. And a quarter. So just move these over a quarter inch. Like that. Oh, I could just do these over there on the bench. So I'm going to cut this piece out so I can stand that up. So that piece stays that way. Should be big enough. Our supply is six. That's six. So cut this piece out right along the bottom of that. That'll stand up and then I'll make two little pieces to fit in there. But these here. This is going to be shrunk up a little bit. I went a little too wide. Okay, there is where I'm going to cut the license plate out. I got to move this over a quarter of an inch. This one's off. And then I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. That hole's just a little too big for my liking. It's a good thing about using this stuff. You can 
make a mistake, you just glue it right back in. No harm, no foul. So, I will take it. Those two pieces back in there. This one here, I gotta move over. The half inch off. license plate is right there. Just like that shows out I'll cut these out this piece here I'll set back in the truck and then I'll make two fillers for both of those and these I'll just glue back in and it'll be good. goes back in. Let's go stick this back in.
Okay. Add a little bevel to my blocks. We'll probably have to put two more in here. Just to hold it flatter. Let the other one go. There it is. You better get all this stuff up here, and then you have to be able to do body work on it to get it to where you want it. Then make a mold out of it. A little bit of an involved process, but make some pretty cool stuff with fiberglass. about where I want it, right there. Okay, that's good. Now, all right, I need some tape here. And dry down on me too hard. Need to goose some more back there. Gets too hard too fast when you don't want it to. It stays hot too long when you don't want it to. There it is. All right, that is that part. Now, I 
I'm gonna shrink this up. This goes on the side. This is too big. better now it's smaller this piece here is going to go back in here like this and that'll be where my license plate mounts and then there'll be the license plate bolts will also hold the top of this in place and there'll be a spot for a light bulb right here So, get this in here squared up, like that. I'll leave it right there for now. That's good enough for right now. The coolest thing about it is you can always change your mind. There's no way, you know, no. No, uh, no limits to the stuff. If you don't like how it looks, change it. Cut the piece out, slap a new piece in. All right, that, like that. Now, you fill in this edge here, fill in this edge here. I'm gonna make my bottom piece. This will come up in here, come up in here. So it's a little different than what I had on the cardboard, but you go between the two, you gotta come up with the main one or whatever. That was. That was pretty dumb, huh? I know. All right, now I made little tabs here this little hole here I gotta fill it in so I will use the use these get them in there like so get them both in that'll, that'll be my edge of the bumper or I mean the license plate so it looks good like that. The good thing about it is if you get it glued good enough you can sand on it. There's 
There's one over here. Going for the same area. of them are in right there I right, gotta do the bottom ones here get those ones in and then start doing this figuring that one out get the corners and the side in there Just keep working around it All right, let's jump over here. Let's do the side and the back corner here. Let's get this one in. So we've got this in, and we can do the bottom piece. We've got this one sitting there. So this was the one. This was the one piece. From, this was the one piece I took out of where the mufflers come through, the pipes. This will be flipped upside down and put on right here. And this should be the edge of this one. And then these will run kind of into it. So we got one sit right there. We know where it's at. Don't get lost. Jump over here and do this. All right, now. This piece over here started. This is kind of where I want the uh, sheet metal to end and the valance to begin, right in that area there. So this piece here I just made. This is a string off the bottom of my rockers right here. So I know where a rocker panel is. Where it's sitting, it's sitting about an, eh, an inch below my rockers as of right now. And this piece right here is just a backer. I'm going to put up here for the part of making this. I need something to hold everything together here. I'm going to put this one in here. Right now, get this string out of there. This up here. The one thing you want to watch out for is that you don't want to get this stuff on bare metal. Hot glue is very hard to get off of bare metal. It's all taken. I use packing tape, masking tape, something when I do an area where I'm on bare metal. Because it is tough to get off. When you try to sand it off, it just turns to goo. So. that one this piece here is my backer right here it helps when you're shaping it'll hold the foam while I'm working it otherwise you don't have any way of holding the foam very good so stick this on there like that Try to keep the hot glue off of bare metal. Stuff likes to stick to bare metal real good and you can't get it off. 
So when I do this, I'll put tape on there. And before, before I uh, stick the foam on there, because I'm gonna glue it, I will take blue tape here. Stick this on here, because this is a lot easier to get off than the glue. And then put packing tape over the top of that because the resin won't stick to packing tape. like that I take packing tape that they want to do when you sticking this stuff down is want to keep the wrinkles out of it as much as possible that on there pretty smooth But this will help it release when I take it all apart. All right, just like that. All ready to go here. Or under here. All right, just like that. This side's all ready to go. Go tape up the other side. All right, there's a better look at it. All taped up anywhere that might get some resin on it or glue on it. It'll all be easy to remove. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get ready to put foam on this part here so I can start putting some shape into this. Make it look like something. This is what I'm going to use to do the bumps, the contours on the bumper. It's just normal foam, but it's uh, resin stable foam. So when I get this to the kind of the shape I like, you'll start getting chunks falling out of it and stuff. But uh, you get it kind of shaped to where you want it, and then you can take and put resin right over the top of this stuff and then let it cure out and then go ahead and do body work put a little bit of a little bit of fiberglass on top of it and then do your body work on top of that to get your mold but you can even get a finished product out of this if you wanted to i'm going to make a mold out of it because i want to have spares since it's going to be a driver something hits it rips it off deer you never know so i want to have backups so I'm going to make a mold that I can keep, I can make other ones out of. So I'm going to use this and then we'll uh, get this on there, start shaping it. But first I'm going to cut it down here. It's kind of, kind of nice stuff to work with. So I have done it with other foam, the styrene foam that you can buy from the hardware store. 
It is not resin stable. So it just, it melts when you get resin on it. So, makes it a little more difficult because you kind of got to try to put tape and seal it so it doesn't get in there. I mean, that's the way I did it when I first started doing this stuff. But when I found out that this was resin stable, I started using this stuff for it. So, we'll make up these pieces and we'll get them glued on there and then we'll be able to start doing some shaping. There we go. There is our base. All done. This is stuck on here really good. Got it on the back side here. So, all stuck on there nice. And now the fun part starts. Get one of these old turkey cutters, electric knives. Let's start carving away. Just kind of get the big amount out of the way and then start working it with the piece of sandpaper. much easier just cutting away some of it before you start sanding on it. It's less sanding you gotta do. Kind of just looking for a shape. Get going on.
Beginning of my shape. It's hard to tell right now because I got the chuck jacked up higher. It's not sitting level again, but it just brings it in a little bit. It takes a little bit less sanding. So I'll do a little more contouring on this one over here. This string is tied. That's the lowest part of the truck right there off the rockers and this is going to be about an inch lower being I got the chuck jacked up this way it's kind of it's throwing me off for level <clears throat> gonna go jack up the front end so it's level again but that's what the boards the backer boards I've got in there I can look at those get an idea as I'm doing it, pull the string, the string lets me know. looking for this has got to be thinned out a little bit more here though and that'll thin out as I'm working it with the sandpaper but now go to the other side and make the other side kind of match this one and then start work one with a roll lock on the sander and just go to town sanding on it all right let's jump over there and match this one kind of just by eye no measuring no nothing so now it's ready just start shaping it out getting to where I want it to look
there it is. It's probably pretty close to where I want it for shape. Now I can stand back and look at it for a while, make sure I like it, and then I'll get onto the finishing of it. So I'll look at it for a few days, make sure I'm happy with it, because sometimes you might change your mind a little bit. But it's nice because it won't do anything. It'll stay just like this. You don't have to worry about starting to deteriorate or something. So just stand back, look at it for a few days, make sure you like it. So far I do. Nothing really I would want to change on it. I do got to put this piece in here though. A little, little piece that goes down here under the pipes, but I need to drop these down before I can get that in there. But other than that, it's come along pretty nice. See this? Don't have to worry about this really. I could put a little tiny piece in there, fill it in. But the, uh, nothing really to worry about because I can get it resined up and I could put a little bondo on there if I want to do or something. But for the most part, it's done. I'm happy with it. So I just stand back. Look at it for a few. Make sure I'm happy with it. You never know, might change your mind. But I think it's going to look good. same on my front bumper that I did on the back. I'm going to just put in some backers here and bases. Tell me where my bottom's at. This is the one for my front right here. This tells me where my bottom's at. Already got this all marked. And stick it on right there. Just basically just tells you the bottom of the bumper. Makes the leveling the bottom easier. <clears throat>
is my layout for my front bumper. It wraps all the way around. It'll come up to the same spot. All ready to go here. So I can start shaping this out. I got my little bottom here. So I know where the level is at the bottom of it. Then I've got my string on my rockers here. If I pull that out on my rocker, approximately there, right there. Go about, uh, it's about an inch right now. That's where I'm at. So, should be a good spot. Now we're gonna start shaping this one out. Get some form into this bumper. All right, we are ready to go. Everything's stuck on here. Time to start getting some shape going on this again. at the both of them kind of hard to see it but kind of get the idea I know that piece goes uphill still it's not finished but just standing back take a look see how I like everything so far so good I like it should make for a cool looking truck definitely gonna turn heads Uh, getting close. Well, it's coming along nicely. I'm getting to like the shape I'm at. It's starting to look good underneath. You can see it's flat all the way across. I like the shape I've got going on on this side. And how it comes up, when you look down from the top, it looks good. But the one thing I did wrong here, this is too thin. You see it's only finger width. That's two fingers. 
I gotta change this one piece. That's the beauty of working with this stuff right here. I can just yank this out of here and change it. And I really only have to change it up to this point if I can find another piece of used foam. Change that piece out. But this one's on its way to getting close to that. And stuff like this, you just fill it in with something. Just glue a piece of foam in there. When you get done, you really don't even have to do that because when you're resin it up, you can stick some filler in there or something. But all this is coming along nice. Following the wheel arch down, keeping the guesstimate of how that arch is going. Oh, let's see. But other than that, it's coming along pretty nice. See, this is this is perfect on this one here. They usually work one side almost to what I'm looking for. I work on the other side, work it. That way, if you go a little too far on one, then you can go back to this one and do this one back a little further. You can just kind of get to where you can meet them both up. But it's getting close, getting close to what I'm looking for. Should be pretty cool looking. I think that looks pretty good. I like it. So now, take the truck and set it on the ground. See how it all looks. It should look pretty mean. So, I'm gonna set it on the ground. Check it out. Well, there it is. Sitting on the ground. That would be approximate ride height. The back end is sitting higher than it's supposed to, so I had to flatten the back tire a little bit. But that'll be about where it sits. What I got uh, right there. Oh. This would be, eh, it's gonna be about seven and a half, eight inches off the ground. So it should be pretty good. Definitely has a nice stance. And now I can take and stand back and look at it. See if I like it or not. I think it looks pretty good. Of course, when you have the wheel on like that, it really throws you off, but you gotta be able to plank that out. 
the tiny wheel in the front and the big ugly wheel in the back kind of doesn't help. But I think it's going to look good. So, sit and look at it for a few days, make sure I like it. Might have to shrink that down a little bit, but that's the idea. I'm taking a look at it. But I like it, I think it looks good. Especially like the front. Front one looks good.